and also precious scholars very good morning to you all and my special good morning to our speaker professor komaraya sir sir welcome sir welcome good and morning, accepting sir. our proposal yeah and uh, giving the uh, this best analysis on budget 2023 and uh, according to my views on my budget this is a uh, already india today named it modinomics modinomics means this is a world banking budget and uh, applause professor anita hod from chairman bos uh, organizing this uh, virtual budget uh, analysis meeting with the speaker of uh, professor komaraya sir uh, i congratulate uh, anita organizing such type of this uh, budget analysis meeting and uh, this budget is total 45 lakh crore and uh, 27 lakh crores are uh, income receipts and the estimated uh, receipts are 23.3 lakhs and the physical deficit is 5.9% and the growth rate expected growth rate is 7% but the reached is 26.5% but as economist uh, i am expecting always double digit growth at least 1.10% but it when, when will we expect this that we don't know our policy makers and our administrators should speak on that <clears throat> our per capita income is also more than doubled 1.97 lakhs around in 9 years but majority of the speakers are expect uh, applauding that uh, individual tax payers are uh, relieved from this uh, income tax but uh, this, that is not that much of relief uh, somewhat uh, better but the first time our uh, handsome intelligent uh, finance minister this is nirmala sitaraman has shown that uh, figures income tax slabs previously the 30% slabs will come under 20 lakhs and above now it is reduced to 15 lakhs so this is the magic of sitaraman and uh, our economy overall is saying that fifth largest in the world previously it is 10th largest now it is fifth largest after 9 years of uh, uh, modi modi no like modi no economics and in this budget i have said that they introduced the first time saptarshi there are seven development priorities uh, in which infrastructure and uh, investment is most welcome parameter in this budget i like that which is the uh, sector should create more jobs for you and uh, one more uh, budget event is uh, that rupees 10 lakh crore capital investment is a welcome decision by the finance minister which is 33% of uh, previously <coughs> expected uh, investment in capital so this is the 2023 budget and uh, its overall is nothing but it is somewhat better relief for individuals and uh, the highly neglected sector is uh, poor and also job employment so we will see in the next budget its hopes and uh, thank you once again anita for giving this opportunity to speak in front of our all university students faculty and also our uh, speaker komaraya sir thank you Thank you. Thank you, Sir. 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 Thank you,
Thank you, Dr. Anita, Head of the Department of Economics, and also who are the organizing the chairman for this. I <laughs> thank my colleague, Bainani, <laughs> Professor Bainani Srinivas, for giving the highlights of the union <laughs> budget. <laughs> Two zero. Two three. Two zero two three dash one zero two four fiscal year. He has highlighted several of the things, and really we have to appreciate him for making the critical analysis, the goodness and the hampering of the budget, and hoping that uh, this budget will have the real boost for the economy of our country. Really, we, uh, this, this, this is the order of the day. The entire globe is looking for, for the India. We are the third largest nation in the economy also, um, followed by America and Japan. Really, this has the this will give us the impetus to us to go ahead in the coming near future. Now, earlier, the union budget were not critically analyzed because of the lack of knowledge on the budgetary activities. Now, even, even common man also looking for the what is the type of budget is going on, what will be the uh, fate of the country for coming year. So, now, I am sure that our guest, Professor J. J. B. Kumar Hizar, uh, Professor of Economics, Banaras Hindu University, is a uh, he is going to give us the critical analysis and sectoral analysis for the, for the union budget of this fiscal year. Before going to that, I have, uh, I am very much optimistic of this budget because this budget has uh, uh, taken care of uh, all the sector. However, it is the political parties, they will, they will make the critical analysis depending upon their, their own views. A budget cannot satisfy the entire country. However, we have to look forward the positiveness of the budget because now you know the um, the mankind requires the uh, TV, uh, uh, electronic gadgets, so they have reduced the import duty. So that gives impetus and also the cost of these uh, electronic gadgets may be reduced or maybe maybe the constant. And also, if you see the uh, the income groups, they have slab, they have made the frequency bill distribution. The, it is also welcome distribution, and there may be some some advantages, some disadvantages. But however, it is also good. And in the this budget, we have to see for the education and research is also they have given importance and and this is a high time for the universities like yogi vemana university we have to look for the better opportunities in the research project and also we have to look for the uh, some uh, incubation centers and also startup programs uh, then only we can go ahead with this because this is one of the vibrant department in the 29 academic programs which are available in Yogi Vemana University College. I am sure that economics is the full-fledged department we are having. This department will bring uh, much more uh, laurels to our uh, varsity and hoping that they will continue to have the several uh, uh, such seminars in the coming uh, days also. I thank all the organizing committee members and the faculty members of the economics department and also my own colleagues from the other department, parts of our university. And before I sign off, I once again welcome our today's speaker, Professor Kumarai sir, is, uh, uh, is one of the pioneer uh, researcher of the economics. 
and i am sure that we will be getting the very good analysis critical analysis on the budget uh, thank you very much for the department of uh, economics for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity thank you one sir sir chinna meeting la unda repetana sir sir kadike sir hand over the mic to dr anita thank you sir um, for the presentation of uh, opening remarks for today's talk and uh, ఆర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ i mean uh, you can see department of history hod uh, dr varja is uh, there and dr my friend vijay varathi kamas mba kamas uh, history department and political science dr parvati uh, head of the department she is sitting along with uh, the students so almost the social sciences and uh, commerce and management studies are also have gathered here to listen your uh, i mean quality to talk so uh, i welcome all the i mean the participants who have gathered here and now i hand over to uh, the today's uh, i mean talk to our uh, valuable speaker of commerce so i welcome you sir on my own and behalf of department of economics yogi bhai mera university so i welcome you sir thank you uh, my audible yes sir no uh, yes a uh, very very good morning to all of you uh, it is indeed my great pleasure in connecting with this uh, budget analysis of 2023-24 union budget and uh, it is it is very great pleasure and uh, it is also subject analysis by the department different departments normally undertake this kind of analysis for getting proper feedback which will be enlightening to the other stakeholders particularly policy makers so this exercise uh, yeah, taken by the department of academics yogi vemana university i congratulate them for this organ- organizing this event and uh, first of all i also uh, thank uh, registrar uh, professor yp venkat subaya garu and the principal k kishore garu and uh, senior faculty uh, department of economics professor p srinivasulu professor m anita head department of economics yogi vemana university and uh, dr t sudarshan reddy garu and uh, dr n narish nayak ganesh nayak and uh, dr s ravi and uh, s sita mahalakshmi and balaji nayak and uh, all the department of the different uh, faculties uh, particularly commerce management and uh, other academic fraternity of teaching faculty research scholars students at various levels i welcome you all to my uh, brief presentation on the budget analysis i would like to share some of the slides uh, of the presentation is it visible yes the we are just coming to the content indian economy uh, may be understood from different angles or by cons- taking into consideration of different parameters uh, just like if growth rates gdp growth rates inflation 
industrial growth rate, agriculture and allied sector activities, foreign exchange reserves, and fiscal deficits. So these are all some of the variables which will indicate us in which direction this economy is moving ahead. These are all some of the statistical figures which presented in the uh, academic survey 2022-23. So in this, if you see the uh, growth trends for the last three years, uh, last four years, 2019 to 2022-23 onwards, uh, this trend is giving some hope that because of this last last years, uh, I think there is some disturbance. Uh, uh, if all of you mute yourself so that uh, this will be helpful for the speaker and the listeners also. Yes, this growth. The GDP growth figures trend, trend will give us some of the indications how economy is fluctuating. And uh, this inflation figures are also particularly this wholesale price and uh, consumer price indices are also giving some trend. So how economy is moving and what kind of measures supposed to be taken for the next level of uh, budget and its allocation for uh, how to control these things is also one of the important challenges for the uh, ministries or even policy makers and industrial growth rate is also this all will give us some of the uh, snapshot where everybody will look at these figures and understand the strength and weakness of the economy if you look at the last uh, Growth figures 1920, 3.7, next 23, 24 expected to grow around 6 to 6.8 percent growth rate. So, this is the just expectation. So, this may increase or decrease because of responsiveness of the economy and its activities and actions and budgetary supports and its investment pattern. And if you see in the Hello. Hello, please uh, uh, mute yourself. I request you all of you please mute yourself. Because this service sector growth rate service sector growth rate recorded 9.1% 9 9 of the last uh, financial year. So it is giving one of the important source of strength for the further growth of the economy. So strong growth in the service sector is identified and its potential is also uh, in the different parameters just like PMI services. So these services are also witnessed a strong expansion since 2022. And the credit growth service are also increased up to 15% since July 2022. And digital banking units, uh, as per the economic survey 22-23, uh, it is also a phenomenal transformation took place. And uh, particularly this fashion, grocery, general mer merchandise uh, to capture nearly two thirds of the e-commerce transactions took place. Uh, and it is also expected to increase further. And the service sector growth rate already mentioned that it is one of the leading uh, growth rates of the uh, different sectors, particularly uh, by bypassing the industrial growth rates also. And it is uh, giving us some of the strength to the economy. And uh, keeping in view all these, the economies, governments are also trying to lift the potential of growth by physical as well as the digital infrastructure. In this, uh, the government programs already uh, implementing this uh, PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan. It is also focusing seamless movement of people, of uh, goods and services, particularly transport infrastructure uh, facilities are creating. And the national monetization pipeline is also uh, allocated 9.2. Zero lakh crores investment potential is also identified, and the UN, UPI transactions were also uh, took place 782 crores transactions uh, for the last uh, 
uh, December 2022. And the national logistic policy was also framed and uh, this is making very competitive logistics policy at a global level. Uh, capacity of major ports uh, nearly doubled in eight years. So open network of digital commerce pipelines through different apps and different uh, softwares, they are trying to improve the e-governance and e-platforms uh, uh, through the digital uh, boost is also highlighted in the economic survey. If you see the uh, uh, inflation figures, 11.5% this uh, uh, wholesale price index is also a uh, little disturbing to everyone in the economy. And uh, this consumer price index, it is keeping 6.8%, uh, but where, whenever these inflation figures are zooming up, but the income levels of the people are also not increasing. So because of this gap, people are facing a lot of problems uh, uh, in coping up of the, their uh, budget, personal budgets. These problems are also identified. And uh, social infrastructure, particularly uh, even uh, in the uh, employment provision, all these are all some marginal increment is there uh, as per the government statistics, but uh, uh, the better quality of life through education or through uh, uh, Sri schools, particularly uh, ashram school, schools, Eklavya schools, uh, 14,500 uh, prime minister Sri schools were also built between 2023 20, to 27. This is five year. Uh, a span of uh, time time and uh, this iits iams and I, triple iits are also giving much importance in the education sector because the education budget is also marginally increased 2.8 8% to uh, gdp to 2.9% so marginal increase is expected to bring some little change in the uh, education sector at a higher level and uh, middle level and lower level education also so urban employment level is also trying to increase the, according to the available data is showing uh, EPFO based net payrolls on the rise of 105.4 lakh in 2023. It means at the end of uh, December 2022, this data was there. And the economic survey figures are also indicating that GDP growth rate is expected to remain robust in 2024 also, 23, 24 financial year, but private consumption crosses half, half of the year, highest since 2015. This was also highlighted by the economic survey. And there is a greater boost to product, production activities leading to enhanced uh, capacity utilization. This uh, will give us some of the recovery uh, is initiated or taking place gradually from the COVID-19 pandemic. And the state of the economy is also broad-based recovery across the sectors. Even uh, when we look at the retail sector and uh, 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 retail inflation uh, and the supply of goods and services. So all uh, corporate sector, FMCG products. So all these are all fluctuations are also recording, but it is expected that to broad uh, growth rate will also uh, expected to increase in the next fi financial year. And um, RBI uh, policy is also, as per the monetary policy, they are also bringing some changes, just like two, two, 225 points, they raised the uh, points and uh, this policy transmission for the repo rates, the hikes and, uh, and uh, the changes will take place. So because of these monetary policy initiatives, sub supply of money in the economy for investments and the controlling of the inflation uh, effectively all these measures may be taken up by the monetary management and financial inter uh, intermediation uh, from time to time but uh, every time rbi is closely watching the economic trends so when we are coming to the budget documents or budget this is budget is compulsory uh, presentation in Parliament as per the Constitution of India, Articles 112, 113 and 110. So three types of budgetary statements may be presented in the Parliament. In addition to the uh, speech of the Finance Minister, uh, all of us know uh, Finance Minister is also holding Corporate Affairs Ministry also. So this 
point A, B, C, these are all indicating under mandatory uh, presentations in the parliament, annual financial statement, a demand for grants and finance bill. These uh, three are important one. And the fiscal policy statements as per the uh, uh, provision of the Physical Responsibility and Budgetary Management Act of 2003, macroeconomic framework statement and medium term fiscal policy and come fiscal policy strategy statements. So how economy is moving towards development. So this kind of trends and statements supposed to be discussed, presented and discussed in the parliament at length so that uh, uh, all corrective measures may be taken from uh, for right perspective for speedy and robust development in the next financial year. When we look at the <clears throat> supporting components of the budget, uh, budget statements, expenditure budget, receipt budget, and expenditure profile, budget at a glance, memorandum explaining the provisions in the finance bill, outcome, output outcome monitoring framework, uh, key features of budget 23-24, implementation of budget announcements. So these are all separate documents starting from E point to L point. So these are all supplementing to the explanatory notes of the uh, those earlier budgetary uh, statements like annual financial statement, demand for grants statement, finance bill statement, and macroeconomic framework statement and all. So explanatory statements are given. So these are all in Nuxel, budgetary provisions, mandatory one, uh, every uh, year we, uh, our finance minister presents, uh, and uh, at length, we will discuss every uh, point or every aspect or every sector. So what are the pros and cons and what is the potential is there where particular sector or particular scheme needs further enhancement in the budgetary support. So all these are all some of the important intellectual discussions at policy makers and other stakeholders in the economy. So that this is the process of uh, discussions. So, in the budget speech also, Nirmala Sitaraman, finance minister, honorable finance minister, she just gave some glance what achieved for the last nine years when this BJP government took to power and they were uh, uh, finance minister claiming that 11.7 <clears throat> crore household toilets uh, under the Swachh Bharat mission constructed and 9.6 crore LPG connections under Ujjala Yojana uh, provided and 220 crore COVID vaccinations for uh, uh, given to 102 crores of persons uh, in India during COVID period and 47.8 crore bank accounts under PM Jandan Yojana. It is a direct benefit scheme. Uh, bank accounts opened and money was transferred and 44.6 crore persons covered under the PM Suraksha Bhima and PM Jeevan Jyoti Yojana. These are all insurance schemes and 2.2 lakh crore cash transfer transferred to over 11.4 crore farmers under PM Kisan Samman Nidhi. Uh, three installments, uh, 2,000 each of 6,000 rupees distributed and the per capita income uh, claiming that it is become more more than doubled reached to uh, 1.7 lakh 97 lakh 1 lakh 97000 rupees per capita income as per the economic survey government is claiming so for the next uh, financial year 2023-24 government ha is having some vision for amrit kal amrit kal means when we are reaching 100 years 75 to 100 years 25 years uh, uh, plan. So they are just trying to focus on the three areas. Opportunities for citizens with focus on youth because uh, India is now having uh, younger population size is much, much higher and uh, growth in job creation because uh, employment opportunities and the creation of the jobs important challenging of the every government as well as the people also for uh, their livelihood they need to search for suitable jobs and strong and stable macroeconomic environment because 
uh, stable macroeconomic environment means instability should not be there, internal conflicts should not be there, political instability should not be there. So this must be maintained with growth only. So that's why for the another 25 years, so these three focused areas, government is set already, vision for achieving these goals. And for this, they also identified, government of India identified in the budget proposal, and Saptarshi uh, category, seven priorities of budget for 2023-24 uh, uh, in the, during Amrit Kal or uh, in the tag of Amrit Kal, it is inclusive development, reaching the last mile, it means everybody should get the benefit out of uh, development, and infrastructure and investment, and unleashing the potential, and a green growth, youth power, financial sector. So these seven priorities are important priorities for the next financial year, and it will continue uh, also, but uh, this is the direction or set particular direction towards implementing the next financial year. When we are coming, agriculture sector is, all of us know, it is one of the important sector and a backbone to the economy uh, in terms of providing employment opportunities. And uh, this sector is also part of inclusive development of agriculture. Uh, more credit to, to agriculture sector was also uh, got uh, 186 lakh crores uh, spent uh, during 2022 uh, financial year. And accelerate, Agriculture Accelerator Fund to create and uh, encourage startups in rural areas, rural entrepreneurship or agripreneurship, agri startups. So for all those, this scheme is uh, intended to give some boost to the people. And Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, Horticulture Clean Plant Program uh, to boost the production of high value horticulture crops because horticulture crops, uh, Production is also important to fruits and um, different types of uh, 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 horticulture crops uh, will also supplement the agricultural growth rate. So 20 lakh crore credit for animal husbandry, dairy, fishery sector uh, provided and additional <coughs> storage capacity for farm produce, godowns and other things are also important for boosting of the agriculture sector. Support to making India a global hub for millets. Millets slogan is Sri Anna. The Sri Anna program, uh, last year also government gave a lot of uh, encouragement to this and the Indian Institute of Millets uh, Research uh, located in Hyderabad is uh, identified as a center for excellence. So through this uh, research institute, millets mission is implementing. When we look at the affordable health for all uh, as an inclusive development, uh, enhanced health expenditure 2.1% of GDP year marked uh, during 2023-24 financial year. And the sickle cell anemia uh, elimination miss mission is also launched. Um, it will be launched uh, 157 nursing colleges established. There are some uh, already established colleges are there and the strengthening of these nursing colleges are also taking place along with this. And joint public and private medical research to be encouraged via uh, select ICMR labs, Indian Council of Medical Research Labs, uh, public-private partnership because the COVID also gave a lot of uh, uh, insights and uh, strengths and weaknesses of this pharma sector and uh, medical research. So government is trying to focus uh, to give public-private partnership in this also. A new program for promote, uh, promote research and pharmaceutical industries. So for this, budgetary support are also increased from 100 crores to yeah. 150 crores of rupees, lakh crores. Uh, this is giving much, much encouragement to the health sector, particularly pharma sector. If you look at the uh, accessing education and skilling, because most of the youth is involved in this sector, enhanced education is Uh, enhanced education uh, education expenditure from 
2.8 to 2.9%, only marginal 0.1% increase in 2023. And the revamped teacher training uh, for through the diet uh, training center, people, uh, teachers should also be upgraded in, the, in their teaching or in their curriculum uh, as per the meeting of the requirements of the new education policy. And uh, national digital literacy is also important for children and adolescents and uh, states will be encouraged to set up physical libraries at panchayat and ward levels also uh, pm uh, prime minister uh, krishi vigyan uh, yojana 4.0 to be launched for the skill kaushal vikas yojana prime minister kaushal vikas yojana 4.0 to be launched for upgradation of skills among the youth. So this is a part of inclusive development. Next, <clears throat> reaching the last mile. Uh, it is also part of inclusive because Pradhan Mantri, uh, this particularly vulnerable tribal groups, uh, primitive tribes are, uh, and it means ex their population is drastically reducing. So for them also development is needed and for the, the special program is also launched in the name of uh, Pradhan Mantri PVTG's developmental mission. And financial assistance to the sustainable micro irrigation uh, per drop per crop type earlier, it was uh, initiated and uh, particularly this is financial assistant is extended to drought prone regions of even specific state Karnataka. 38.800 more teachers for 740 Ekalavya model residential schools. Recruitment is initiated and free food grains to all Antyodhya and uh, priority households for one year under the Prime Minister Garib Kalyani. Antyodhya Yojana and uh, Bharat Shri to be set up for digitization of the ancient inscriptions. Uh, whatever ancient inscriptions are there for them also um, try to preserve all those uh, precious in inscriptions for this. For that also government is giving some uh, importance. Outlay of PM Awas Yojana also enhanced up to uh, 66%. Uh, investment in infrastructure and the productive capacity. Uh, in this also, growth and employment multiplier is uh, expected and it is increasing in capital investment outlay by 33.4%, uh, reaching to 10 lakh crores. So likewise, urban infrastructure uh, tied to tier three cities via establishment of UIDF, Urban Infrastructure Development Fund, so this is also uh, helping to boost the uh, infrastructure development or creation of infrastructure in urban areas. And uh, unleashing the potential of uh, strength of the economy towards transportation and uh, accountable administration. So for this, uh, in phase three, e codes, uh, online codes or electronic codes to be launched. And already this, uh, Court business is also viraling and uh, available even in the TVs also. And Vivad uh, Se Viswas. So MSME disputes may be uh, dis uh, disputal, uh, di dispute settlement mechanism is also uh, created. And uh, inputs, input based to result based, this financial sector and better allocations and scarce resources. Uh, these areas are also gave a lot of importance in during the financial year. Next financial year. So rupee comes from, so for this government budgetary, what is the government revenue and where government is getting the revenue out of one rupee or uh, this is for sake of, for the sake of understanding the distribution of the revenues resources. So government is receiving 34% of money in the form of borrowing and other liabilities. And 17% uh, 
this 17 percent is revenue is coming from the goods and service tax and other taxes only and the income tax is also contributing towards uh, 15 percent contribution and um, corporate income tax is also equally contributing income tax and corporate corporation tax and followed by this union excise duty yeah, yeah. 7 percent <laughs> followed by non tax non tax receipts net debt capital receipts and custom duties so this the, this is the this is the resources components Hello. Ah, where, where, where this money is spending by the government? So allocation budget allocation to different sectors are major sectors uh, government is spending out of the, its revenue interest payment is interest payment is around 20% it is highest amongst the all allocations and uh, central sector schemes is receiving 17% and uh, share of the taxes and the duties, states share, share duties around 18%. And the finance commission to the other transfers to the different states, 9%. And uh, other expenditure, 8%. Defense is also 8%. And the central sponsored schemes, 9%. So this is the broad distribution of the budgetary amount, revenue and budgetary amount. It means whatever we are borrowing, we are also spending interest rate much, much higher in the spending. If you look at the budget profile, budget total budget is 45.03 lakh crores. So out of this, if you see these circles, so revenue is coming, this gross tax revenue is contributing much higher, followed by net tax receipts and capital re receipts and the debt receipts. So all these are all different components, how much share and how much uh, money in terms of lakhs is spending, uh, receiving in the budget. And how government is spending in different schemes in terms of money, uh, lakh crores. This is giving in lakh crores. Subsidy 4.3%. And the subsidy this year also marginally declined and economic service 7.8 percent. So these are all uh, indicators how government is receiving money total out of total budget and how much money is spending in different heads. So when we look at all this, it is giving some of the glance how economy is moving and uh, what kind of uh, schemes government of india is implementing and how much money is received in terms of revenue and how much is spending or just allocating to different schemes so this uh, if you see the gati shakti inclusive development reaching to the last mile this primitive vulnerable uh, uh, particularly vulnerable primitive tribal groups and infrastructure development, Prime Minister Gratis Shakti, unleashing potential youth and uh, providing of the employment opportunities, green growth, youth power and financial sector. So all these areas, seven areas are covered. Uh, government of uh, India is giving this kind of allocations. Atmanirbhar and the clean plant program is also government outlay of 2200 crores and 157 new nursing colleges established. And these are all some detailed uh, programs, if you look uh, look at. Agriculture Accelerate Fund for the Startup Young Entrepreneurship, this was also covered. Sri Anna is also 
covered. These are all some of the details. And 20 lakh crore agriculture credit integrated animal husbandry for dairy and fisheries was also covered. And a new scheme PM Machya Sampada Yojana for fisheries, 6,000 crores of rupees uh, allocated uh, for the next financial year. And a digital public infrastructure for agriculture. So these are all uh, primary part level and uh, agricultural primary agriculture credit societies computerization or digitization for this 63,000 crores of rupees allocated and the sickle cell anemia this was also covered and the aspirational black programs covering 500 blacks because of this uh, sustainable development goals of uh, 17 which were identified and recognized and Miniti Ayog is monitoring all these and every year uh, these uh, aspirational districts and its blacks uh, government of india is also awarding to the state governments or local level people at panchayat level also uh, for encouraging their uh, local areas or block development uh, even districts also so for that also uh, different services health nutrition education agriculture water resources financial inclusion, skill development, and basic infrastructure. So all, all these black level development uh, news program is also emphasized. And 15,000 crores for implementation of Pradhan Mantri, particularly vulnerable tribal group development mission. So this budget allocation only, 15,000 crores. Investment of 75,000 crores, including 15,000 uh, crores from private resources, 100 critical transport infrastructure projects uh, for the last first mile connectivity for ports, coal, steel, fertilizer, food grain sector. So this is also budgetary allocation 75,000 crores for all infrastructure development. New infrastructural financial secretariat is created and district institutions for educational training for teachers uh, to improve the skills, uh, digital library for children and adolescents at local levels, even for local languages are also uh, is encouraged. And 55,300 crore to be given for as a central assistance to up, uh, Upper Bandra project for irrigation, micro irrigation for filling up the surface tank for drinking water. So Bharat shared resp uh, Repository for inscriptions. This is the digital thing, uh, ancient scripts scale, uh, in, uh, ancient scripts to be digitized and restored. And effective capital expenditure uh, for off center to be 13.7 lakh crores. So this is 50% uh, 50 years interest free loans are also extended to the state governments under the capital uh, expenditure effective capital expenditure because states will borrow and try to create their infrastructure as per their requirements. So this um, I got Karma Yogi scheme is also initiated. This is the integrated online training platform. It is it will be launched to provide continuous learning of opportunities for lakhs of government employees to upgrade their skills and facilitate people centric approach. So for this uh, this program is also likewise many uh, programs there and more than 39,000 com compliances re reduced and more than 3,400 legal provisions uh, decriminalized to enhance ease of doing business because of uh, whatever legal provisions are all there they are all liberalized and uh, uh, gave to the Corporates for easing of doing business, uh, inviting the business people at a global level in the form of investment summits and other programs. And the Janviswas bill to amend 42 central acts have been introduced to further trust based governance. So it, most of the available acts are also modifying. So, e courts projects, so these are all discussed. And uh,
theaters are also there and the green credit program and the national financial information registry this one district one products program is also encouraged and the geographical uh, indication products and the handicrafts sector is also gave a lot of impetus and rbi mahila samman saving certificates are also expected to launch and uh, this will offer deposit facility up to 2 lakh rupees in the name of women or girls for tenure of 2 years up to march 2025 20, uh, at fixed interest rate of 7.5% only for uh, women samman saving certificate just like indira saving certificates so these are all some figures and the total receipts of the other than borrowings is 24.3 lakh crores of which net tax receipts are 20.9 lakh crores this is for 2022-23 budget total expenditure took place at 41.9 lakh crores of which a capital expenditure is 7.3 lakh crores the fiscal deficit is 6.4 identified um, to GDP it means as per the budget estimates this limit is keep maintaining and for next year budget estimates set the figures the total receipts other than the borrowings is estimated to be 27.2 lakh crores and the total expenditure is estimated to 45 lakh crores so this difference will become a fiscal deficit the net tax receipts are estimated to be uh, at 23.3 lakh crores the fiscal deficit is estimated for 5.9 percent of the gdp it means 6.4 to 5.9 percent it is just only estimation it may increase or it may decrease to finance the fiscal deficit for during 23 24 the net market borrowings from dated securities are estimated at 11.8 lakh crores the gross market borrowing is estimated at 15.4 lakh crores. So th this second part is also giving some set how government is trying to reduce its deficit and trying to improve the economic performance. So this, uh, in the direct taxes also, the income tax relief is also given some extent for individuals, for pensioners also. Uh, this up to 3 lakhs nil, 3 lakhs to 6 lakh 5 percent, and 6 lakhs to 9, 9 lakhs 10 percent, 9 lakhs to 12 lakhs 15, uh, 12 lakhs to 15, 20, and about 15 lakhs 30 percent. In this world, and a new tax regime, regimes are also offered. So, different schemes are also giving different types of these are all details of those points only. And uh, Indirect tax also, as we discussed, that uh, GST or import duties, custom duties. So all these are all some relaxation is given. Particularly this lithium ion cell for use in the battery of electronically operated vehicles, uh, electronic vehicles, and the camera lenses and its input parts. So reduced to zero, and some of the parts of open cells of TV panels, it is also reduced to 2.5%. So basic uh, electronic kitchen chimneys, 15% to 7.5%. Uh, 7 so these are all some of the concessions uh, extended in the next financial year. Some relief is given to the people, consumers. So these are all some of the areas, acid grade, uh, fluoresces, crude glycerin, shrimp feed, lab grown diamonds to export other countries so silver door bars and articles so legislative e codes and other things are also there and when we look at this uh, food security and nutrition security also minimum support price is also increased from 1.5 times and uh, continued growth of institutional credit to the agriculture sector 315.7 million tons of food grains expected uh, recorded in 2021-22 11.3 crore, uh, crore farmers covered under the financial pm samman nidhi 
So these are all some of the facts and figures which are giving us some of the set how government of India in the next financial year is going ahead. Even industrial growth rate is also uh, reviving gradually from 2.8% to 3.7% and it is also expected to increase further and further in coming years and the micro and small enterprises have grown by average of around 30 percent since since uh, 2022 and the credit to large industry has been showing double digit, uh, digit growth since october 2022 and electronic exports recorded 4.4 billion to 11.6 billion in 2022 so this is the performance, even service sector performance also there. Robust expansion, purchasing power, manufacturing industry services. It is, as per the latest CMI data, last, uh, this um, January month points some extent reduced as per the today's, today's news. So external sector is also performing well and the merchandise exports were increased uh, 3.32.8 billion in during April to December 2022. And India is also trying to uh, export and showing its presence as a large receipt of remittances from the world around US dollars 100 billion in 2022. Second largest major source of external finding, financing. So physical and the digital infrastructure already mentioned partnerships and the national infrastructure pipeline, national monetization pipeline, and the Gata Shakti, electricity sector and renewable the government is also trying to in the form of infrastructure and its utilization capacity and the production capacity is expanding. So logistically global competitive uh, role is also encouraging and the digital so these are all some of the ideas which i would like to share in the uh, as a part of budget analysis uh, by highlighting some of the glances and the government initiatives uh, intended to implement during next financial year uh, thank you all for those who are connected online uh, for your patient listening Thank you, one and all. Over to host. Hello. Thank you, sir, uh, for your detailed analysis of uh, uh, sector wise, uh, that is agriculture, industrial, and services sector. So, uh, uh, I have listened and uh, noted down all the points. So, well, these were of interest. Sir, um, and I would like to request the, the scholars, research scholars, and the students, uh, I mean, who have gathered uh, here uh, to raise the questions and doubts. I mean, uh, our sir. The esteemed professor combination will give the clarification of your doubts. Please, any questions? Scholars from social sciences, management, farmers, students, please raise your questions. Very good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. Sir, so I am very appreciating the whole analysis of union budget 2023 and 2024, sir. 
Sir, I have one small suggestion and the dance and doubt, sir. So, over a period of 17 years completion of this FRDM, still governments, both at the central level and the state governments, don't accommodate and don't follow the norms of FRDM, sir. Still, fiscal deficit and revenue deficits are very high as per the FRDM norms. So, yes. Let's see. Uh, and uh, uh, afraid of the future generations because of this uh, debt. So, as you shown that uh, in the total expenditure, 30, uh, uh, 20 percent of expenditure goes to payment of interest, and 34 percent of revenue comes from borrowings. Still, continuously, the governments uh, getting borrowings at a very high level. So, what about the future, uh, its impact on futures? Sir, very, uh, very challenging point, sir, for uh, even governments and everyone also. Uh, because being a uh, middle income country and a developing country, of course, our per capita income is reached up to 1.97 uh, lakh rupees, but still our developmental deficit is finding at different levels. And uh, for this, we need a lot of money for investments. So we have to, or we are compelled to depend on the borrowings. So for future generations also, there is a lot of stress how to repay the money, even the interest as well as the principal component. So that's why most of the governments are in debt trap. Even the state governments are also under the capex scheme. Fifty years, fifty years interest free loans are extended by the central government to state government. But this will also this will also again contribute towards debt trap. So that the governments and the people at the different states are at grassroots level. They they are compelled to suffer a lot, sir. And uh, it is very difficult to uh, repay amount along with the principal amount as well as the interest rates in uh, real sense. So after waiting few years or longer years, if go governments or international agencies, if they write off uh, the loans, then only this uh, problem will be resolved. Otherwise, otherwise everybody is having instead of a per capita income per capita debt component is much much uh, leading or higher so this this kind of problems are always uh, there being a developing economy so for this also frp bm whatever our objectives are our, our guidelines are saying we need to reduce this 3.5 percent level or even 4.5 percent level or reduction is there but sometimes this is unable to manage the figure because because of the various compulsions and populist schemes and government ambitious programs so mostly this infrastructure pro projects require huge investments because of this also this kind of deficits are increasing so this is some extent my observation which may not be satisfied you to your answer but uh, this is the clearing fact of the economy sir Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, good, afternoon, sir. good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> uh, I could not be able to join at the time of inauguration. So this is uh, Professor Venkat Subbaya, this for Yoga Emna University. So I, on behalf of Yoga Emna University, I welcome you uh, for delivering a uh, lecture on union budget. Thank you, so, sir. Thank you. Uh, I congratulate uh, Professor Anita Madam, uh, Dr. Uh, Sudarshan Reddy, and other faculty of uh, economics so for arranging uh, a seminar on uh, union budget. So I extend uh, my thoughtful thanks so for, for accepting our invitation for delivering a nice lecture on union budget and enlightening our students on this uh, seminar, sir. Thank you very much, sir.
thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir <laughs> sir I, i heard that you are you are you are extending your fullest cooperation to the department of economics in all aspects sir so thank sir. you we, uh, we are looking forward to for your cooperation in the future also definitely sir definitely sir madam anita madam yes sir sir thank sir, you thank very you. much thank you madam the, this was the third seminar i think uh, uh, third seminar has been arranged in the yogyamna university on budget analysis one is uh, one first one was conducted by political science and public administration and second was one was conducted by commerce department and uh, the right department now has taken up the initiative and i congratulate you madam thank you sir thank you very much sir. Thank you. Hope the lecture was very fruitful. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll meet some other occasion on some other occasion. Sure, sir. Sure, Thank sir. You. We look forward. Thank you. Any questions from students, sir? Good afternoon, sir. Can I interact with the team in Telugu also? Telugu language. Okay. Okay. I don't have a problem there. Sir, good afternoon, sir. చెప్పండి సార్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సార్ నేను ఇక్కడ స్టూడెంట్ సార్ పొలిటికల్ సైన్స్ పబ్లిక్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ సార్ ఫైన్ సార్ ఏం లేదు ఇప్పుడు టోటల్ గా యూనియన్ బడ్జెట్ పెట్టింది 45 లక్షల కోట్లు ఓకే దీంట్లో మొత్తం స్టేట్స్ కు అంటే వెనకబడిన స్టేట్స్ కు బైఫర్కేట్ అయిన స్టేట్స్ కాని తర్వాత స్పెషల్ ప్యాకేజ్ అని ఆల్్రెడీ హామీలు ఇచ్చి ఉన్నారు సార్ ఏమి కూడా అంటే స్టేట్స్ కు ఎలాంటి బడ్జెట్ ఇవ్వలేదు కానీ కర్ణాటక ఇట్లా బీజేపీ రూలింగ్ లో ఉన్న వాటికి మాత్రం వెనుకబడిపోయింది అని చెప్పి ఫైవ్ థౌసండ్ ఫైవ్ థౌసండ్ కోర్స్ ఇచ్చారు అయితే అంతకంటే ఈ రాయలసీమ గాని ఉత్తరాంధ్ర గాని ఏపీ గాని కొన్ని అంటే దేశంలో మిగతా చోట్ల కూడా కొన్ని రీజన్స్ వెనుకబడి ఉన్నాయి సార్ అయితే దీన్ని ఎలక్షన్స్ టైమ్ లో ఓన్లీ బీజేపీ రూలింగ్ చేసే స్టేట్స్ కు మాత్రం వెనుకబడి ప్యాకేజ్ ఇవ్వడాన్ని ఎట్లా చూడచ్చు సార్ ఇది మామూలుగా పొలిటికల్ డైనమిక్స్ ప్రకారంగా పొలిటికల్ డైనమిక్స్ ప్రకారంగా ఏంటంటే ఏ పార్టీ ఎక్కడ సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్ లైజనింగ్ కరెక్ట్ గా ఉండదు అక్కడ ఇటువంటి బడ్జెట్ అలొకేషన్స్ లో మనం పొందే బెనిఫిట్స్ లో మాత్రం చాలా తేడా వస్తుంది అదే మనం చూస్తున్నాం ఇప్పుడు ఉత్తరప్రదేశ్ కూడా నేను ఉండే ఉత్తరప్రదేశ్ కూడా చాలా వరకు మంచి మంచి ప్రాజెక్ట్స్ ఇక్కడికి వస్తున్నాయి అయితే ఇక్కడ రీజన్ ఏంటంటే వెనకబడి ఇప్పుడు ఫిఫ్టీన్త్ ఫైనాన్స్ కమిషన్ ప్రకారంగా ఇటువంటి ప్యాకేజెస్ ని రద్దు చేస్తూ దాంట్లో రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీని పెట్టేసేసి ఏం చేస్తారంటే లోన్స్ తీసుకోవడం కోసం అని ఇప్పుడు కోవిడ్ తర్వాత గవర్నమెంట్ సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ కూడా చాలా వరకు డబ్బులు రెవెన్యూ తగ్గిపోవడం వల్ల మీరు కూడా లోన్స్ తీసుకోండి ఇప్పుడు క్యాపెక్స్ స్కీమ్ అదే దాదాపు యాభై సంవత్సరాల వరకు మీకు కావాల్సిన అమౌంట్ మీరు లోన్ తీసుకోండి ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఫ్రీ మీరు తీసుకొని మళ్ళీ రీపే చేయండి అని చెప్పేసి అంటుంది అంటే లోన్ మీద రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఎక్కువ ఉంటుంది గ్రాంట్స్ మీద రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఎక్కువ ఉంటుంది మిస్ యూజ్ చేస్తారు తర్వాత ఇదంతా ఉంటుంది అనేది ఒక కాన్సెప్ట్ అది అది అన్ని చోట్ల అది జస్టిఫైడ్ కాదు అయితే ఈ కాన్సెప్ట్ ప్రకారం ఏంటంటే ఇప్పుడు అన్ని కూడా మార్కెట్ ఓరియంటేషన్ అయిపోయింది అందుకోసమే ఇప్పుడు స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్స్ దగ్గర కూడా బడ్జెట్ రిసోర్సెస్ లేవు ఇప్పుడు మనం చూస్తే ఫైనాన్స్ కమిషన్ ప్రకారం కావాలంటే నైన్ పర్సెంట్ అలొకేషన్ ఇస్తున్నారు చాలా అలొకేషన్స్ చాలా తక్కువ సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్స్ చాలా తక్కువ అయిపోయింది దానివల్ల స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్ చాలా అంత సివియర్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ క్రైసిస్ అటువంటి పరిస్థితులు ఉన్నాయి ఇప్పుడు గవర్నమెంట్ పవర్ పాలిటిక్స్ ఎక్కువ ప్లే చేయడం వల్ల ఈ అన్ని నెగ్లెక్ట్ చేయడం జరుగుతుంది అన్నట్టు ఇప్పుడు ఏంటంటే ఇప్పుడు ఇష్టమని హామీ ఇచ్చినవి కూడా ఇవ్వలేని పరిస్థితి ఇప్పుడు స్టే బీజేపీ గవర్నమెంట్ లో కూడా కొన్ని ఏరియాలలో కొన్ని పాకెట్స్ లో ప్రాఫిట్ చేసినవి కూడా ఇవ్వలేని పరిస్థితి వస్తుంది అవి ఎప్పుడు ఎవరు ఎలా చేసుకుంటారు అనేది నెగోషియేటింగ్ పవర్ దాని మీద ఆధారపడి ఉన్నది అన్నట్టు ఇప్పుడు ఎంత వరకు మనం ఇది చేస్తాం అనేది ఇది కంప్లీట్లీ పవర్ పాలిటిక్స్ అలా వస్తుంది ఇంకొక చిన్న డౌట్ సార్ ఇప్పుడు ప్రీవియస్ బడ్జెట్ చూసాము నవ్వు ఇప్పుడు పెట్టిన బడ్జెట్ చూసాము అయితే సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ స్టేట్స్ అంటే ఇండియాలోని అన్ని స్టేట్స్ కు బైఫర్కేట్ అయినట్టు లేకుంటే వెనుకబడిన ఇచ్చిన హామీలు ప్రీవియస్ లో సక్సెస్ చేయలేదు ఇప్పుడు కూడా సక్సెస్ చేయలేదు ఎలాంటి బడ్జెట్ ఇవ్వలేదు 
సో ఎప్పటికి అవ్వచ్చు సార్ ఈ స్టేట్స్ కి ఇచ్చిన ఇప్పుడు పెద్ద పెద్ద హామీలే ఉన్నాయి సార్ ఇప్పుడు ఏపీ బైఫర్కేట్ అయినప్పుడు పోలవరం నేషనల్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ తర్వాత కడప స్టీల్ ప్లాంట్ ఇట్లాంటి పెద్ద పెద్ద హామీలు ఇచ్చింది అయితే ఇవి ప్రీవియస్ బడ్జెట్ లో ఇవ్వలేదు ఇప్పుడు బడ్జెట్ లో ఇవ్వలేదు మేబీ అది పొలిటికల్ గానే ఉంట ఉండబోతుంది సార్ నెక్స్ట్ బడ్జెట్ కూడా దాదాపు అలాగనే ఉంటుంది ఇప్పుడు అంటే ఈ స్టేట్ కి బడ్జెట్ అమౌంట్ రావాలంటే దాదాపు అంటే ఈ కన్విన్సింగ్ చేసేసేసి తర్వాత ప్రైమ్ మినిస్టర్ తోనే లేదా ఫైనాన్స్ మినిస్టర్ తోనే ఈ కన్విన్సింగ్ పవర్ ఉంటే తప్ప ఎలొకేషన్స్ రావట్లేదు అక్కడ నీడ్ బేస్డ్ అని చెప్పేసి ఆ నీడ్ ని చాలా మంచిగా ప్రజెంట్ చేసేసి ఆ తర్వాత వాళ్ళతో ఒప్పించే కెపాసిటీ ఉండి ఒప్పించుకుంటే తప్ప ఇది లేదు ఇవన్నీ మ్యూచువల్ అగ్రిమెంట్స్ ప్రకారంగా అవే ఏమి లేదు దెర్ ఇస్ నో ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ పాలసీ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ పాలసీ అంటే క్లియర్ కట్ ఇన్ టోట అంటే ఒక డాక్యుమెంట్ ని ఇంప్లిమెంట్ చేయాలి ఇది ఉన్నది అని చెప్పే పరిస్థితి లేదన్నట్టు ప్రస్తుత పరిస్థితి how much capable of convincing and how much capable of tapping the resources from center is important criteria ad ayipoyindi ipudu thank you sir next second bits ulla adu mana have any questions any responses from the uh, student side student side or scholar side or those who are working on even agriculture sector or industrial sector as a research topics ravi amadu okay so i would like to uh, i mean invite our డిపార్ట్మెంట్ కలీగ్ డాక్టర్ సుదర్శన్ రెడ్డి సార్ డాక్టర్ ప్రఫుల్ బోర్డ్ ఆఫ్ థ్యాంక్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఇట్ గివ్స్ ఏ ఇమెన్స్ మెజర్ టు సే వన్ ఆఫ్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు అవర్ ఎస్టీఎఫ్ డబ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ అండ్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ సార్ ఆన్ ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎకనామిక్స్ యూరోపియన్ యూనివర్సిటీ అండ్ మైజల్ uh my whole heart thanks to professor kumaraya sir uh, department of economics nana hindi university uh for this uh, great presentation and whole very detailed analysis of union budget 2023 24 so every aspect of the uh, area and the activity has been touched in this analysis sir uh, your patience and uh, very detailed analysis uh, we are very thankful to you uh, and also you, uh, not only department of economics students but also other uh, departments history political science telugu generation uh, also benefited a lot to in your uh, presentation sir so once again we are very thankful to you sir i also i also thanks to my sincere thanks to our uh, uh, esteemed registrar professor vai venkat subbaya and also principal professor k krishna reddy for his continuous support to, to organize this seminar and also participating and uh, given their valuable remarks we are Uh, sincere thanks to the star and principal sir uh, next to uh, our thanks to my colleague faculty professor srinivas subbaneni present to register urdu university and uh, uh, his uh, welcome uh, speech for this seminar and uh, finally my sincere thanks to all the faculty members of uh, your university and other universities and also uh, students research scholars media etc 
we are highly thankful to all of you. Uh, once again, I thank all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much to all, all, all your university administration and uh, particularly head of the department and department of economics university for inviting me to share my thoughts on budget union budget 2023-24 and uh, its sectoral analysis. Thank you very much uh, for entire uh, Stakeholders are entire departments of the Yogyakarta University, particularly the Department of Economics. Thank you, Varun Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to your support and strengthening with the Department of Economics, Yogyakarta University, in future. Sure, madam. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Okay.